Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're looking at this 2022 Toyota Tacoma with a 3.5 liter engine in it. I'm going to show you a lot of the emissions components on this vehicle and tell you what they do and how they work on this vehicle. So emissions components, locations, and information on this vehicle. First, let's take a look at the underhood label. This label right here gives you a ton of useful information about your vehicle. This will let you know what emissions equipment is on your vehicle other than the EVAP and the PCV. Let's go over this label real quick. First, the DFI, SFI, that's the fuel injection. We're not going to worry about that too much in this video or at all in this video. And then next, you're going to have your 2WRHO2S. That's your two wide range heated O2 sensor or air fuel ratio sensors. These are your pre-cat oxygen sensors that read the exhaust or the emissions coming out of the engine and I'll show you those locations in this video. Next, two three-way catalytic converter times two, that's what the parentheses is. So you have a total of four catalytic converters but the front two cats are the only cats being monitored by the computer. Next is two heated oxygen sensors. These are going to be your post cat oxygen sensors these are going to be the sensors that are responsible for telling the computer if the catalytic converter is good or not and i'll show you the locations of those and give you some information about that in this video this video will apply for the 2016 to 2023 year model toyota tacomas with the 3.5 liter engine in it so let's get going on the emissions component locations and give you a ton of information about those coming up right now First, real quick, right here on the top side of the engine, driver's side, front of the engine that is, you're going to find your emissions vapor purge solenoid. This solenoid allows evap vapors built up in the evap system to flow into the intake and go through the combustion process and cleaned up through the catalytic converter in the exhaust and out of the tailpipe. So this is your vapor purge solenoid. Make sure you check out my video library. I have a video on replacing and testing this solenoid, so check those out before you go too far. Next up, right here on the back side of the engine, between the engine and the firewall pretty much, you're going to find the PCV valve, right on the back side of the driver's side valve cover, your positive crankcase ventilation valve. What this valve does is it opens up when vacuum is given to the PCV, more so when you're like idling around town or a lower RPM I should say, and that's when your PCV valve works more. When it opens up, allows air to flow through the breather on the passenger side and go through the engine and all your built up gases and fumes in the engine from the combustion process and the blow by process that will get sucked through the pcv and into the intake and again go through the combustion process and through the catalytic converter cleaned up through the tailpipe so that's your pcv valve positive crankcase ventilation valve make sure you check out the video shorts as well i'm going to go over a little bit more on these and the flow of the pcv valve and the other components in this video so make sure you check out the video library next up we're going to have the bank 2 sensor 1 air fuel ratio sensor this was actually the wide range oxygen sensor that was on the under hood label this oxygen sensor is responsible for telling the computer how much fuel and air is coming out of the combustion chambers to tell the computer how much fuel to give or take away to the intake process. So they're pretty, pretty important. They do recommend that these, or the manufacturer recommends that these are replaced about every 100,000 miles. And honestly, in the last few years, I've been getting up on actually doing that on my personal vehicles. It actually does make a difference, I feel. But always re replace the oxygen sensor or any part with a OEM or factory replacement part if you can. If not, I believe it's the NTK oxygen sensors on this. That would be your second best. I will provide links in the description below for all the parts shown in this video as well. So this is your Bank 2 Sensor 1 wide range oxygen sensor or heated oxygen sensor that is. Now moving on to the Bank 1 side of the engine. That is going to be the passenger side of the vehicle is your Bank 1. Right here, this is where the breather hose pulls fresh air into the PCV system. Remember earlier in the video I mentioned I'll show you where the breather sucks air in. This is where fresh air enters the engine so it could be sucked out through the PCV valve going into that intake over there on the driver's side. So, breather hose right here. 
Moving along, you're going to find the mass airflow sensor right here, right inside the air filter. And in my video library, there's an air filter replacement video too. So, But your mass airflow sensor is responsible for measuring the air entering the engine. So the computer knows how much or the volume of the air actually entering the engine. So it could figure out how much fuel to give or take away and give you the best optimum performance out of your vehicle. So it is pretty important that your mass airflow sensor is working properly. You can clean these with some carb cleaner or they actually make some mass airflow sensor cleaner if you check it out. Maybe there will be a link in the description below for that as well. Bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor. This is on the label your wide range heated oxygen sensor for your bank one. So bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor right here. Looks pretty easy to replace. You have the connector right here on top. It doesn't take too long to replace these. Again, 100,000 miles is when they should be replaced. And you can access the oxygen sensor from the side of the vehicle if you take these little covers off. I have a cool little pair of pliers right here. It pops the plastic rivet right off and gives you access to the oxygen sensor if you want to replace it. So this is your Bank One Sensor One Wide Range Heated Oxygen Sensor. Now that we're down here on our knees pretty much on the bank one side to so the passenger side, let's go ahead and crawl under the vehicle and get you a view of your bank one catalytic converter and the bank one sensor two oxygen sensor. So shimmy on under the vehicle. Hopefully you're jacked up. I'm just basically on the floor. That's why I'm a little zoomed in on this. So I'm sorry about that. But let's check it out right here before your bank one sensor two oxygen sensor. You're going to find the bank one catalytic converter. This is the catalytic converter that is monitored by the computer. So if you have a bad cat on your bank one, this is going to be the cat that you're going to be looking at. The cat that is more in the exhaust stream or further down the exhaust stream, that one is not monitored by the computer. So you'll never know if that one goes bad. If you want to be environmentally safe, go ahead and replace it every 100,000 miles ish. But the computer doesn't monitor that one. So moving down the exhaust stream, your bank one sensor two heated oxygen sensor. This is the oxygen sensor responsible for measuring the efficiency of your bank one catalytic converter. It'll give the computer information that the computer will use to assume if the catalytic converter is good or not. This is your bank one sensor two heated oxygen sensor, the connector right there on the top of the transmission. If you have the right tools, you might find links in the description for those. These oxygen sensors should not be too hard to replace. So let's get up and move on over to the next component. Moving back on over to the bank two side, so the driver's side of the vehicle, we are going to shimmy under the vehicle and look for your bank two catalytic converter. So your bank two catalytic converter is right outside of the combustion chambers on the engine, right outside the manifold that is. You're going to find your bank two catalytic converter. This is the catalytic converter that is monitored by the computer. Again, the cat that is more downstream or that is past your bank two sensor two oxygen sensor is not monitored by the computer. Let's move down the exhaust stream a little bit. You are going to find your bank two sensor two heated oxygen sensor. This is your bank two oxygen sensor that is responsible for measuring the efficiency of the catalytic converter, actually measuring the air fuel ratio in the exhaust stream to give that information to the computer so the computer knows if your catalytic converter is good or not. So your bank two sensor two heated oxygen sensor. Now we're going to move on to the back of the truck and find the evap canister and vent solenoid. I really appreciate you guys staying tuned in this video and hope that this video does help you out. If it does, please make sure you leave a comment below with the year, make, and model of your vehicle so everybody knows what this video will actually help on. But let's get moving to the last emissions components in this video, and that's going to be the EVAP canister and per se vent solenoid. Right here on top of the axle pretty much above the fuel tank, you're going to find the EVAP canister, and that leads to the leak detection pump. The leak detection pump on this vehicle is an all-in-one component per se. It opens up to allow vapors to escape the EVAP system when you're pumping gas. It is also used by the computer to make sure your EVAP system is holding pressure. It does everything all in one. So this is your EVAP system leak detection pump. Again, if you're having fuel pumping problems, this will probably be the issue. So check this one out. Now the vapor canister itself, they very rarely go bad. But if they do, this one is located right on top of the fuel tank. It looks like the aftermarket is pretty big on all these parts, so everything should be fairly cheap. 
and I haven't replaced the vapor canister yet on this vehicle, but it doesn't look too hard to replace. I'm not sure if you'd have to actually drop the tank because it is above a frame connector. So it might be fairly easy to replace, but this is the location of the components. I hope everything in this video helped you out or gave you a starting point in your diagnostic or repair. If it did, again, please comment below. Let me know what kind of vehicle you have. Like, subscribe, and share. If you know somebody that is taking care of their vehicle or maintaining their vehicle to get either optimum performance or the longest life out of their vehicle, make sure you tell them about Scotty's Hobbies. I will see you guys on the next hopefully helpful video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.